Hello, this is Toph from Trifle Production with another Blender Quickie for beginners. And uh, in this Quickie, I'm going to just show you guys how you can easily model a cup in Blender. This is just, you know, you can do this in your spare time just to keep your skill level up when you're wanting to just kind of, um, kind of mess around in Blender. Uh, but before I continue, I would just like to say Happy New Year to everybody. Um, hope everyone had a safe and uh, responsible New Year celebration and uh, hopefully this year will be a great one for all of us if we look in the right direction but anyway back to the tutorial <clears throat> uh, I'm going to model this cup here that I got off uh, line it's just a simple cup and it's just something that like I said before you can just practice you know with just to keep your blender CGI skills you know up to par so to speak uh, now the first thing I'm using, you can do this in any version of Blender. I'm using Blender 2.82. Let me make sure that my, you see the keyboard shortcut keys are working this time, this add, this add on. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to split this side of our window up. We want to bring our cup into Blender so that we have to keep looking back and forth between what's on our computer and what's inside of Blender. This will save some time. Let's split up our window. Let us hover, click and drag. And we're going to turn this into, let me see, UV Editor. Let's drag this down some more. And we're going to, let me see, let's click on Image. Do I have to do that? No, let's let's not do. Let's just drag it in there, and you can open up a folder in, in on your computer. Now the way I open up my folder is I have this icon at the bottom. I'm just going to left click on that, and I'm going to go to my desktop, and there's my cup right here. I'm going to left click and drag this over, and it appears just like that inside of Blender. And in order to keep our cup somewhat stable, there should be an option here to pin it. You see, is that still in here? So now in an old, older version of Blender, you can just pin, uh, pin, there it is, there's a pin icon. Click on that, is it activated? Pin image. I guess it's pinned now since it's darker colored. But this helps because we, if you're working inside of Blender, you have an image here that you're using as reference. Sometimes if you go into edit mode, it makes the image disappear, but if you pin it inside of this window, it stays put whether you're in edit mode or not. Now you would think, well, this cup is somewhat circular, so let's just use a circle or a sphere to create our uh, cup. But that's not a good idea. Sometimes you get some weird results when you do that, but we're going to use a cube to create this cup. Now I'm going to press one of my keyboards to see, look at it from my front view. Now left click and drag on the move icon there to move my reposition my window. And let's put it on this uh, X axis line by clicking on our move gizmo. Let's left click and drag on our mouse on the Z axis and pull this up so that the, our object model sits on the X axis. I'm going to scroll up so I can zoom in. <clears throat> and I'm going to add a modifier to this. So I'm going to go to my modifier tab, pull this up a little bit more, click on this wrench here, add modifier, subdivision surface. <clears throat> Excuse me again, the weather's kind of affecting my throat somewhat. Let me get some water to drink. <clears throat> it's a little bit better. Uh, and now what we're going to do and increase our viewport render because we want to see what this looks like or have this at three levels of subdivision so in our viewport option here let's left click twice one two and it gives us somewhat of a sphere this also helps if you're working on creating an eyeball never i never use a sphere to create an eyeball I always use a cube and subdivide it into a sphere it gives you better results now let's click one again on our keyboard now before we apply our subdivision surface modifier to our sphere here, let's go into edit mode by pressing tab. We have our, uh, the original shape of our uh, model here, which is, was the cube. 
we're going to press Control r on our keyboard and when we move our mouse around it gives us a yellow um, line across it which is an, a vertice that's going to use to uh, apply to our cube here now in blender 2.79 i think that this line is orange or blue if i can remember correctly but whatever color it is you'll have a line here so let's left click to choose that to confirm that uh, line there and just eyeball it just pull it down to about the bottom of our sphere here left click again that's going to give us the bottom of our cup we we'll to do the same thing with the top part so press Control r again and then pull your mouse over to the side you see another line come up and left click to accept that uh, line there and then drag up a bit and that gives us the top of our cup now we want it to have more of a tapered or tapered kind of uh, look because if you look at your our cup here our reference cup here the top part is wider than the bottom part and so in order to do that we want to make simulate it also here so we want to we want to make the bottom part of our cup smaller so let's, let's press press on our keyboard so we can have that that x-ray vision or x-ray view of our cup z and then press a to deselect everything and then press c for circle select and to increase the influence of our circle select you just scroll up and down on your mouse and we're going to left click there and left click there if we pivot around we can see that I selected everything from front to back let's go back into the the front position by pressing one and we're going to press s on our keyboard and just drag it in we're going to eyeball it drag it in okay and you can see that the cup is it's not like a perfect tapper or taper, so to speak. There's a bit of a kind of almost like a sharper kind of uh, increase from the midsection to the top. In order to do that, we're going to have to add another loop cut to our uh, model here by pressing Control R. And then we're going to uh, drag our mouse over to the side. We see that our loop cut is uh, there. So left click there to accept that left click again to confirm it and then press A on our keyboard and we're going to make the top part a bit wider in order to do that again let's stay in x-ray mode x-ray mode and then press C for circle select left click left click eyeball it again press S on our keyboard and drag up on our mouse to make this a little bit wider and there we go let's press A again to deselect everything Z to go back into solid view and that's the basis of our cup here, the base model. And then let's get out of the edit mode by pressing tab. And now we want to apply our subdivision modifier. So just click on apply there and it's been applied. Now it looks a little bit on the rough side because it's in uh, solid shading mode. We want to smooth this out by pressing W on our keyboard from our pop-up menu. We're going to click on shade smooth because it's flat now we want us to be smooth so let's press on shade smooth click that and our cup is smooth now if you go into the top view by pressing 7 you can see that our cup is still pretty much solid and we want to cut a hole in the top so from the top view uh, which is 7 on our keyboard you can scroll up a little bit press tab on our keyboard you can see the mesh itself once again, let's press circle select by pressing C on our keyboard. And let's have our mouse over the middle. Let's make sure our cursor, our crosshairs, is pretty much in the middle of our cup there. And you just scroll up on your mouse, or scroll down actually, to increase the influence of uh, your selection. And once that's done, and you've engulfed the whole top part, left click, and then right click, deselect. Then press X on your keyboard and click on delete those vertices at the top. And then when we go into the front view, now we have an open cup, which looks great. Now we want to kind of create these ridges here uh, on our cup. This is just like a reference for us to use. It's not, we're not trying to completely duplicate, you know, everything, you know, uh, tit for tat, so to speak, or 
exactly as we see in our image. We just won't need it as a, need it as a reference. You can see that it has these uh, kind of decorative designs of loops in it, and that's not hard to replicate. So when we go back to our uh, image here, let's scroll up on our keyboard to zoom in, and let's hover on our move gizmo to move the our view here. Left click and drag this down. I want to put a couple of ridges at the top here. And that's not hard to do, it's just the same concept, control R, get our loop cut going. Left click, left click to accept. And we're going to press S on our keyboard to, to make our uh, loop cut stand out a bit more because these, these are ridges right here. We want to simulate ridges also on our model. So with the loop cut, select to press S on our keyboard and drag out with our mouse. And it's the same process again, press A, Control R. You can just pick anywhere, you know, here. We're gonna just kind of eyeball this to just left click there. Left click S again and drag out. And let's create just one more. Control R again, left click, left click, S, and then scale out. Now if we go back into <coughs> excuse me, object mode by pressing tab. We have our loop kits there, but that they're not well defined as they are in our image here. To fix that, let's go back in edit mode. And we're going to hold down Alt on our keyboard. And we're going to click on the top part of uh, this first loop here above our um, the loop that we added. So left, so hold on Alt, then left click. On your keyboard, press space and type in edge. Click on edge slide. And the reason why we're doing that is because when we want to move this edge down, we want it to be pretty much in line with the uh, the new loop cut that we created. Because if we don't do that, it's going to pretty much just stay the same size that it is. Because as, as we move it closer to this new loop that we uh, expanded out, it's actually going to expand out automatically itself because we've picked edge slide. So I'm going to click on edge slide and pull this down. You see what it's doing? It's it's extending. I'll show you what it does when we don't pick uh, edge slide. Let's say we just leave it as it as it is. We press it on our keyboard and pull down. See what it's doing? It's not really sticking to the same uh, size as this new loop cut that we just created and we expanded out. That's why we press uh, the space bar and click on edge slide so that it conforms to the new loop. Now left click there and, and accept that. Uh, hold on Alt, left click on that bottom one also, same thing, space bar, edge slide, pull this up. We, do want, we want to make this loop, this bulging loop as tight as possible. To simulate the same ridges on our model here, we're going to do the same thing with these uh, other uh, loops that we have here. Alt, left click, space, edge slide, pull down. Alt, Left click on that bottom loop, space bar, edge slide, pull this up. And let's put another loop right here just to define this edge here. By, so let's press control R again and move our mouse over, left click to accept that. And we're going to press S to scale in a little bit. Okay. Then space, edge slide, pull this down. And the last one, Alt. Left click, space, edge slide, pull this up. Now if we look at our cup now, now the edges are those loops, that, that loop design that's there looks more defined. Now the next thing we want to do, is we don't want to like model this handle from, you know, by, we can do it a no, number of ways in Blender, but we just want to stick with, you know, pretty much using the same uh, model here without having to, uh, create another uh, mesh. So we're going to just create the handle from the side of this cup here. Let's press tab to go into edit mode on our cup here. And we're going to press 3 to look at it from the right orthographic view. And we don't have to have that cup handle like directly in the middle. I mean, there's really no need to do that. But let's go into face look by clicking on this icon there. And we're going to press, uh, let's choose, 
probably this part, this part of the mesh, left click there, and go back into one of the side view, and then press E to extrude. Just pull it out. Well, we don't have to pull it out just yet. Let's let's make it come straight out so we can kind of simulate this handle here. Left click on our move gizmo and still having that part of it selected, pull this out. We have our handle there. Press E again, we're just eyeballing it. Pull this down, press R on our keyboard, rotate it somewhat. Pull it down a little bit more. And we're going to press uh, E again to extrude. Pull this down. Rotate this, eyeball it. And leave that there. We're going to go to three again to go, go to our side view. We're going to, let's try to straighten this out also. And straighten this out, press, uh, okay, uh, this is a combination I have to remember. S, X, zero. Is that it? Sometimes it's kind of iffy trying to remember the uh, right process to get this flattened out. So S for scale, Z, zero. Okay, that's it. That flattens it out. When you press S, that scales it on the Z axis at zero, which means it's not going to, to make it bigger or smaller. It's just going to make it flat. So S, S, zero to make this part flat. And that gives us that. Now let's press there on our keyboard again. And let's reposition our window here. And let's let's just scroll down a little bit. Eyeball it down to make sure we're right underneath this uh, our uh, handle here. And we're going to choose that. So because we want to have that part to extend out and meet at the top. And we're going to connect those two. So in our keyboard, for the extrude, left click, drag this on the X axis. Rotate a little bit. In our keyboard again, pull it on the x-axis, pull up. And let's do it one more time. Uh, let's rotate it first. Press R on our keyboard, rotate. And still eyeball it. And then E again on our keyboard, left click to accept that change and left click and drag again on the z-axis. And let's pull it out a little bit. Once again, we're going to press S, Z, 0 to flatten that out. And pull this up. Now we're going to connect these two together. Now the thickness is a little bit different. But when we connect the two of them together, it'll pretty much uh, uh, level itself off. So with that face like to press S, X on our keyboard and delete faces. Let's pivot, hold down your middle mouse button and kind of move your mouse around. Left click on that face also, X, delete that face. And the next thing that we're going to do is that we're going to go into, there's several ways you can connect this together. But I'm just going to do it the straightforward way that's coming to my mind right now. So we're going to click on uh, that icon to go into uh, ver vertice select or vertex select, I guess. Gonna hold down shift, left click, left click. M on our keyboard, is it M? Or is it control M? Or alt M? There is alt M. Sometimes it's just so many keyboard shortcuts you have to kind of try to remember which one it is. And we're gonna click at uh, click on that center. Left click, left click. Hold down shift, left click the second uh, vertice. Alt M at center in the same process. Left click, hold down shift, left click, alt M at center. Left click and left click, alt M and merge at center. And that merges the cup together. Let's go into edit mode, onto object mode, look at our cup here. And that looks pretty good. Now you might think, well, this looks a little bit on the rough side, but this is how we polish it up a little bit to make it a little bit better. We're going to, let me see, let's go to add modifiers and then click on some division surface and that makes it a little bit better. But our handle here looks a little bit rough. And in order to fix the handle, let's go into edit mode. 
don't apply this modifier just yet. And we're going to click on face select, hold on alt and left click on an edge there. And we're going to press on uh, the space bar. Let's delete our uh, edge slide there, delete that and type in bevel and click on the second bevel when you scroll up is this how it is hopefully this is hopefully this isn't freezing up here okay there, there it is it froze up for a second let's reposition our window here space bar bevel again click on the second bevel option and we're going to it freeze up again I'm trying to add more bevels to that center part Sometimes this happens in Blender, it just doesn't want to cooperate. Let me click on spacebar again, click on bevel. There we go. It, to add bevels to um, an edge there, you could, I don't think we even have to select the whole, that whole side. Let's just click on an edge there. Let's go back to that part. Click on Alt and Edge then spacebar have double selected then okay there we go okay that's better and you can add um bevels to it by moving up moving your mouse up and down like this and then you scroll up to add uh loops to it and left click when you're satisfied with the way that looks let's go ahead to uh object mode see how that looks and that looks a little bit smoother let's do that second loop cut the same way so hold on alt left click space bar bevel with your mouse up and down and it's just accepted the last uh bevels will be added to it it pretty much kept that selection so to reduce the bevels you just scroll up and down your mouse move your mouse around physically to increase the influence and you can scroll up with your mouse to add loop cuts left click and drag looks good and let's go to the bottom one and do the same thing edit by going to uh, pressing tab alt left click move your mouse around see sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't this is this is where you have to have a lot of patience with blender because even even though I've been using blender for quite some time it's still kind of a still kind of gets on my nerves a little bit but uh, space bar bevel okay, there we go and left click to accept that alt left click to choose that edge loop space bar bevel and let's see move your mouse around to increase the influence of that bevel left click if you're sat when you're satisfied with the result and tab and there we go and that's the edge of our cup but you can pull it out to give it more of a uh, crescent shape Either way is fine. And we want to kind of tighten up the handle uh, where it's connected to the cup. So go into edit mode again. Uh, press Control R and then hover on that edge. And once you, once you see, wait a minute, let's deselect all that. We don't want any strange things happening with this selection and what we're doing up, uh, up at the top. So press A. Now press Control R on your keyboard. Hover your mouse around the top base part of your handle, left click, and then pull that in to tighten that up. Same thing at the bottom, Control R, see the loop cut there, uh, left click, then drag it in, move your mouse inwards, and then left click to accept that, and that looks a lot better. Now we have the fact that our cup is here, but it looks pretty thin we want to add some thickness to it like this one is in order to do that just another modifier click on add modifier and click on solidify and it has given us some thickness to this and then to to increase the thickness you want to just change this parameter let's click a few times on that you can just got to be careful a little bit because now it's trying to actually thicken up the handle a little bit Sometimes if you move the modifiers and up and down the modifier stack kind of helps with the um, appearance or the effect of the modifier and model. Let's try that. Let's uh, let's see. Let's move this down. Let's see what happens. You see, we move the uh, solidify below 
the or the subdivision surface below sort of solidify and it fixed the handle so sometimes that does work and there we go there is our cup that we just modeled in blender and this this is just if you want to add a material to it, it's just pretty simple um, uh, let's click on our viewport to change the viewport appearance of our model here and hopefully this isn't freezing up because now it's not uh, responding there we go <clears throat> and let's uh, divide up our window here click on that icon with our cup selected and then click on use nodes and I like to use node mod the uh, node system in terms of whenever, whenever I add textures to a uh, model it's better for me visually as you can use this if you want to but this to me is more accurate in terms of changing what you want to see in your viewport and if you want to change the base color to this, just left click on that, click on the eyedropper, and click on purple. And I don't know if it's going to show up there or not. Let's see, how come this didn't change? That's weird. Let's press, let's see, let's click on that, click on our icon. There we go. I don't know why it does this. I mean, this is the same as this, but for some reason, when we change the color, uh, to purple here it didn't change here it we had to change it here also which is weird but our specular is up so that's fine the roughness is down if you want to make it a bit shiner like this is you can pull down the roughness even more uh, pull up the specular a bit and add some metallic to it and that will give us more uh, of a shine or a shame to our cup and that's how you can make a cup and blender from a cube, uh, just straightforward. Uh, this kind of went on for a bit of time, but uh, yeah, this is just uh, an easy way to make a cup and blender. Uh, let me change my viewport so you can have a better, some more light in here. Okay, there we go. Ooh, that's really light. But yeah, that's how you can make a cup and blender from a cube. And this is today's Blender Quickie for beginners, just to have you, you know, use modifiers in Blender and get used to using them using keyboard shortcuts. As you can see, even when I was using the keyboard shortcuts, it took me some time to kind of remember some steps here and there because there are a lot of steps sometimes even to make something this simple. But once you keep doing it every single day, you keep practicing and so on and so forth, this will become second nature in terms of remembering keyboard shortcuts. And also using modifiers and modifier stackers in Blender to make your life a lot easier when it comes to modeling things in Blender. And once again, uh, hopefully, hopefully this video was helpful for those of you who are watching. And I thank you guys who have watched this video. Thank you guys who have subscribed in the past. Those of you who are subscribing now and those of you who are subscribing in the future. And I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.